channel. Say there's something else in your life that maybe it's a hobby, something you're working on, or maybe there's a dream you have in the back of your head. You can apply that principle to wherever you're at as well. Hey, welcome back to another Axe Family video. I hope you're doing well. I hope you got a smile on your face because today is a beautiful, beautiful day. And we're here out in the forest and Taylor and I are going camping, but we're not uh, just going to any camp spot. We're going to a camp spot that another YouTuber is going to take us to. His channel is named Coyote Works. What's up guys, Casey with the Coyote Works channel. Taylor and I are new to overlanding. You know, we could probably find an area, but you really kind of showed us one of the best spots. Uh, I just gotta say thank you right off the bat for finding us an amazing camping spot. Absolutely, my pleasure. This is one of my top secret camping spots <laughs> and I only show it to people who live more than 200 <laughs> miles away, so. I'll just kind of ask you some questions and kind of what we've been doing because we've been meeting a lot of YouTubers. Fun for us has been getting to know them uh, more personally and kind of building a community of creators. I've really been enjoying that content. It's been neat for me seeing, you know, you've had a chance to actually talk to some YouTubers that I've watched for a long time. So it's been really interesting to kind of get to see through your videos another side of some of these people. So why don't you uh, just tell us like how you got involved with YouTube, like what got you started doing this? Were you camping before YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, so so I grew up basically on a, on a ranch, pretty remote, and our ranch was surrounded by BLM land. And so most of my life growing up, in my free time, that's kind of what I did was just roamed the back country. And, and my grandpa and my father were, you know, woodsmen and hunters and everything. So I just kind of grew up in the lifestyle and and never lost my passion for it. I um, it's, it's truly like my favorite thing in the world just to be out in the mountain somewhere, or out in the desert somewhere. And like for me, like a successful trip, I measure a successful trip by the number of people that I see out there that I'm not connected to on the trip. And like the perfect trip is one where I don't see another vehicle or another person for a couple of days. Yeah, so Taylor's drinking a, a kombucha, or as I like to say, kombucha. And then what was this one? This is the dust cutter. And Refreshing you... delicious mango lemonade. Mango lemonade. Well, those are like two of his favorite yeah. things combined. So Oh, yeah. it smells really good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> wow. That's really good. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's hard not to just like the whole thing. down it right now. <laughs> So on the scale of extrovert and introvert, you're probably on the more introvert side. Yeah, which is really ironic because I, I work in community development, so my career really really requires me to be an extrovert and interact, interface with people and public meetings and, and community projects and things like that. But I, uh, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, when I'm off the clock, I just want to get in my Jeep and run out in the mountains. It's kind of the same for us, like we're strong introverts. And I say a lot in our videos that we like being out in places like this. We like space. Yeah. And we yeah. like to be in big spaces. So, yeah, it's the contrary for me. Like, I was really excited to meet you guys. Like, I really enjoy meeting people 
you know, my favorite is sort of more one-on-one -on -one or in small groups like this, but I always enjoy getting to know people. I'm just not a crowds guy. And yeah. I like the solitude. As far as how I got started on YouTube, that's kind of an interesting story too. I worked in an office and I had a couple of like work friends in the office and they would always ask like, what did you do this weekend? And so I would tell them like, oh, I went out and uh, spent the night in the mountains and, and built a survival shelter. And, and I could tell they never really got like what I was doing. So yeah. the whole reason I started my YouTube channel was I made a couple of videos with my phone of one of the trips and then I put them on YouTube so the other guys, my friends in the office could see yeah. and could understand what kind of trips I did. And then they were like, wow, that's so cool. Like, why don't you make more videos of your trips? And then, it, so it just kind of started from there. I just started doing videos. And so about three years I've been producing regular content. Do you have a couple sponsors? I, first I would say that one thing I haven't really done is you know, as your channel grows, you get a lot of offers. You'll start getting more and more emails from people that want to send you a piece of gear or something like that. And like you want to get all that free stuff. But I think it's really important to make sure that that anything like that you do is sort of aligned with the rest of your channel, you know, so. Taylor, you said you had a, a question. Yeah, I'm just curious when you started getting sponsored or all of that, how many subscribers? Did you have, was there like a time where you hit a number and then... Right, right around when I started having success with sponsors, meaningful sponsors in the sense that they were, there was significant value to them was right, right around like seven, 8,000. And we've kind of noticed that as we're putting out more content and as I'm putting more work into the content, it's just naturally growing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of just kind of my pursuit right now is to just create videos for you guys and you know make them really good uh the best that i can in 24 hours <laughs> uh, i keep kicking myself because i i publish videos but then i'm just like man i could make that so much better and so i'm just trying to get really good at being efficient with editing yeah so every every video i I produce I feel the same way like I I finish editing it I think I'm satisfied with it I put it up on my channel and then like a day or two later a lot of times I'll watch it on my channel and I just think about all the things that I could have done better or how I should step up my quality and... yeah so but one of the things I learned is like it's it's good to be consistent and just keep putting out content and uh, from watching your videos one thing that I've really enjoyed is just how genuine you are. You know, there's a lot of YouTubers that are out there and they're they're kind of being fake, you know, and they're just overexcited all the time. And um, not that that's bad, but it's just you're not getting a picture of who the person actually is. And there's a value in YouTube where you can actually get to know people as who they are, whereas like a movie, you know, someone's acting. And so uh, that's something we're trying to do is like, you know, be excited about life, but at the same time, if something's just mundane, then then make it feel mundane because that's what it is. Or if you're sad, like then be sad and just be genuine to who you are. And that's kind of the feel that I got from from watching your videos. And it actually felt like I was hanging out with you. You know, you, you like to be alone, you go camping, but you got thousands of people that are going <laughs> yeah. camping with you. So. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because, you, you know, I go to these really remote areas and I'm all by myself and you know, probably 70 to 80% of my trips, I'm solo. And, but since I started doing the YouTube videos, it's a really interesting dynamic because I don't feel like I'm alone out there when I'm filming a video. I sort of feel like, like I think of all the guys that, mm -hmm. you know, comment on my videos and event, and it sort of feels like they're there with me. And it really is like added this weird, interesting new dynamic to it. And it really yeah. doesn't feel lonely, but I think that's a great point, Cody. And one thing I appreciated right right away about you guys is when when we met, you, you were the same people that I'd seen on your video, and that's not always the experience I've had. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about people who present a different personality on their channel, and I've met YouTubers like that. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, this, is this the same person? This is not even the same. I mean, everybody's got to pick their own path, but I really appreciate channels where I feel like I'm getting a connection with the real person and their real passions on the other side of it and yeah for sure you know if you're if you're forcing it in essence 
then that adds another element of work to it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so much easier for me to just go out and just be who I am. One thing recently is I've started incorporating a lot more like historical things in my videos, the old homesteads and the old mines and everything. But I thought that history was such this, you know, small little niche. I thought nobody's going to be interested in seeing this stuff on my YouTube videos. But I finally got to a point where that's what I wanted to do. And I only have limited opportunities to create content. So it was like one day I just decided, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to start showing this aspect of it too. And it's it's been really interesting because a lot of people have responded really positively to it. And so now it just feels like even one more little element that's like more of just what what I do. That's what I do. I get in my Jeep. I go find old homesteads yeah. and camp. And What I like about it is you're, you're basically taking this kind of barren land. It's not barren, but you're taking this like it, it's whether it's like desert or maybe there's dense trees like this. But you're you're looking past kind of just an emptiness of maybe what a lot of people see and you're you're actually finding these gems of like history and just this rich like story that's coming out of the land where it's really just a pile of wood you know it's been rotting and drying out but there's somebody lived in that house or yeah. somebody pulled water from that well or yeah you know they've moved cows through this area or whatever and so the first place we stopped was at an old historic barn that's still standing there that was built back around the turn of the 19th century as we've been meeting like a variety of youtubers some youtubers we've met just getting started some people have been at it for 10 plus years you've been at this for twice as long as we have what kind of advice would you give us you know it's like an exponential curve right like it seems like it takes forever to go from zero to a hundred subs and then like from a hundred to a thousand takes a long time and and then but the farther along you get like the quicker that growth curve starts happening so like in the last year, really, I've gone from like 10,000 subs to 20,000 subs, you know. So I think a lot of it is just time, right? P putting enough content out and just staying with it for long enough. I think of that, there's an expression, I don't know if you guys have heard, that says don't quit before the miracle, you know. And so hmm. I would say that if you're enjoying what you're doing and you're passionate about wanting to share that with people, like just keep doing it. The success will come, right? There's and and that I think is more so a product of the success on you more so than how much money you spend on camera gear and more so than how good you are at coming up with catchy titles I mean all those things have an effect obviously but I feel like the single biggest thing is just just sticking with it and and again that's why I feel like it's so important that you have to enjoy it you have to find a way to enjoy it so that you can so that you don't burn out and probably hundreds of thousands of channels on YouTube that die around that thousand sub marks. Mm. And, and I always see that when I stumble across the channel and I look at how many subs they have and I look when their last video was published and it's like three years ago. And I think, man, they quit right before the miracle, right? Like if they would have kept mm. going another year, you know, yeah. they would have hit 5,000 subs and 10,000 subs. And... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can, I can say that, um, you know, the, the probably the big reason why I'm doing this is because like I love making the videos, and I I enjoy sharing our life, and and there's a passion to that, and I wouldn't stay up till four in the morning editing if I wasn't passionate about <laughs> it, you know, and and so that's a really good word, and and I hope that if you have a YouTube channel that you're hearing that, uh, you know, to keep going and to stay consistent, but also say you don't have a YouTube channel, say there's something else in your life that maybe it's a hobby, something you're working on, or maybe there's a dream you have in the back of your head, building a home, you know, owning a certain vehicle, something. Uh, you can apply that principle to wherever you're at as well. And to just keep, can be consistent, you know, keep at it, uh, keep the dream in front of you. Uh, bring people into your life that are going to encourage you that have gone before you and and uh, don't give up you know don't quit before the miracle don't quit before that's the good. miracle yeah some really good advice uh, we're super excited to be here just to hang out with you and to meet you is you know the biggest privilege of all it's been a pleasure for me as well this is something if i can make the time to meet other people that are on the same path it's a, i always get so much out of it too and We'll get some time off camera. I'll get to check out some of the gear you guys use. And that's where I get all my ideas from. And So definitely go over to Coyote Works 
YouTube channel. He's going to be posting a video as well. And so there's a whole second half of this content that uh, if you want to go see it, you're going to have to go over to his channel. And when you get there, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. Just push that subscribe button all the way in. And if you're new to my channel, uh, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Push that subscribe button all the way in. Ring the bell so you get notified when we make videos. There's a big thumb war going on on YouTube right now. So click that thumb war button to help us win. And we'll see you later. Hats off to you. Coyote works out.